All right, everybody. Steering wheel guy here at Dallas. Uh, we're going to go for a little bit of a cruise. We're going to talk a little bit about this uh, crazy invention here. Let's see if we can get this baby fired up. New motor in this thing. Let's see how it plays. Come on. That was good. All right, you'll notice my wheel is custom molded. Yes. And Okay. This particular steering wheel here has been under development for about 20 26 years, over a quarter century, this thing has been remolded over and over and over again. And just the other day, I came up with a palm swell here, which actually <laughs> was a nice addition. And I think the lesson there is to never give up, never stop playing with the material. It's user interactive, meaning that you can go ahead and, and play with it to your heart's content over and over and over again until it's perfect. Unlike what some of the other guys are doing, they're popping mold static in the garage, having the driver sit in the car, and yes, they will get a good impression of their hand on the wheel, but is that the right grip for the track? Over the years that I've been doing this, I, I sincerely believe you've got to have video of your hands out on the track manipulating the steering wheel on a relatively mild mold before you can go ahead and make deep radical wings here and flutes on the backside and then playing with roundness and uh, flanges. It, it's one of those things that it, it, it has to be developed. And unless the material that you're using is remoldable, you're going to end up with a mold that, yes, is better certainly than the stock suede or leather, but, you know, is it going to be optimal? Probably not. In fact, it won't be. So when you get out on the road, on the track, wherever you're developing it, always try to have a camera, a GoPro or something pointing at your hands and do not think about your hands. You want to be operating what they call the subconscious competent mode. In other words, you're not thinking about it. Your hands are just moving on the wheel. Then you're going to review the footage, and you might notice that, you know, if this wing is, or actually it would be this wing for the shifter, was too big, you might not have access to it in a left-hand turn. Now, as you get used to using molded wheels, then you'll develop some muscle memory where you'll learn to maybe move away from the wheel before you come down. These are things that have to be developed over time. But you probably can't see it. I don't know, it's a wide angle lens. But anyway, this shifter is also molded. So what I wanna do is come up with a total ergonomics package. And the total ergonomics package basically is a full wheel mold so that if you shuffle steering, you move outside of your home positions, which is the position that your hand takes when you're going down the straights, just where you're naturally settled into, that's your home position. And, uh, I'm sorry, I got a little bit of traffic here. But anyway, you're gonna have your home positions uh, and then you're shuffling outside of that home position. So anyway, through time you'll, you'll learn how to mold these, this material. Basically you get out a heat gun, you heat it up, start massaging the materials after you wet your fingers because obviously plastic, when it gets hot, it gets sticky. Through the years you'll learn how to shape the material and create designs that work best for your steering method and hand size. You know, your first mold is merely your best guess. And then after that, you start working it and developing And yes, you will do, uh, notice a pretty big difference as you get into it. 
I want to talk a little bit about gloves too. You want to get a form-fitting glove that is as thin as possible because when you're dealing with a molded wheel, there aren't going to be any pressure points. So you don't need a thick leather glove to protect your hands. You want it as thin as possible. Obviously fireproof. Hello. You're not going to use a non-fireproof glove if you're racing. But um, that's it for the gloves. Now you'll see, obviously, this is a one-lap car. And, uh, you know, I use it on the streets on a regular basis. And so I'm not going to wear gloves on the street. So this mold is really optimized for both cruising on the streets and on the track. Got a dog box in this thing, so you might hear you might hear the gears crunch a little. That's why they call them crash boxes, but I love this thing. It's an Emco dog box. Phil uh, in Mooresville, North Carolina can hook you up if you ever uh, want to try one. He does all kinds of gear boxes too. You don't have to do dog boxes. But anyway, um, that's basically what this material is. It changes the steering wheel from a passive device where it's a set and forget kind of thing, and it turns it into a user interactive human machine interface. Yes, that's a lot of mumbo jumbo, it sounds like it. But the point being is, you know, I remember one of my customers one time said he was just gonna wrap it because he's thinking of it in the old sense, meaning that you're relying on the friction between your hand and the grip to control it, which requires that you squeeze it. But if you get a good mold, your hand can nestle into it. You no longer have to squeeze. You destroy, you don't destroy, <laughs> you eliminate the excess tension in your forearms. And all of a sudden, the top of the mu slip curve, which is where the tire uh, begins to break away, feels like a sharp peak. Because if you have tension in your forearm, you can't tell the difference. You can't tell where the peak is. And so what ends up happening is you steer back and forth across the top because you don't know where it is. And yes, you might cross it and reach the peak and you'll notice the car comes in a little better. But if you can sit there and find a way to ride exactly on that peak, you can ride more precisely at the limit. So that's, uh, that's basically what Persona Grip does, is it lets you find the limit with exact precision and ride it. I've got a few programs set up. You know, I've been doing this for over a quarter century, so if you show me video of how your hands interface with the wheel, I can pretty much get you a design. Look at how cute that pup is. I can pretty much get you a design that's gonna be a significant improvement over what you're doing right out of the gate. And if you choose to pull out the heat gun and mold it, chances are it's not gonna look as good when you're done as what I can do with it because of my experience. Well, at that point, you can send it back and I won't destroy the design, but I'll texturize it, beautify it, trim it up, and make it look really good. And that is uh, the ProPack program, that's included. Now, if you get the basic program, the entry level program, I'll still give you that mold, and then we can do video chat with a cell phone and figure out how to get the design better. In other words, I can look on my cell phone with my heat gun and show you the moves you need to make to get the result, the best mold for, for what you want. So uh, that, that's the program. Obviously, the Pro Pack program is thing is guaranteed for life. So you can mold it, mold it, mold it, and then at any time send it back, and I'll go ahead and beautify it. If it, anything happens to it, it'll be returned to you just like it was when you got it the first time. So those are the programs. It's a lot of fun too. You know, you're taking a, a previous uh, non-adjustable item, your steering wheel, which obviously you like the way it feels or whatever, and you're turning it into a user interactive device. And when, once you feel what a little bit of leverage can do for you at the human machine interface, to the point where you no longer have to squeeze the wheel, it makes such a difference, it's unexpected. And in fact, that brings me to a point that I want to talk about, I hope we're still rolling here, and that is 
I waited until serial number 35. That's what this wheel is. Serial number 35 I made on October 5th. Now keep in mind, Emerson Vittipaldi won the 1993 Indy 500 with serial number one, and that runs on Memorial Day, the end of May. So I waited five months. The inventor, a previous Skip Barber driving instructor, I was the chief instructor at the Bobby Ray Hall Track Time School. My graduating thesis was vehicle dynamics for the automobile. Man, I'm, a, <laughs> I was going down every possible rabbit hole, but think about this. I had done 34 steering wheels and I hadn't even tried one myself. And that, I think that says a lot. That says basically that I myself didn't believe that this stuff would be anything more than perhaps a little, maybe a little bit more comfortable. So when I shot an on-ramp that I went every day to go pick up my mail in Pittsburgh at the Ross Park Mall, and I felt through the steering wheel in a Harky BMW for the first time, the top of the new slip curb like a peak, I actually backed off the throttle, turned around and looked to see if I hit sand because EMG tests with electrodes on the forearms have shown that it takes 54% less effort to turn or to hold on to something when you're properly molded to it. 54%, less than half the effort goes into just trying to hold the object. So anyway, all that means is you're reducing the tension to less than half. You're, you're able to read the, the limit with basically it suddenly lights up like a peak in your mind and it just changes driving it makes your balance on the throttle versus the pressure you feel in the steering wheel hand an absolute perfect ballet and that's why these things are already in the 400s for the serial numbers these guys love them and man i mean i love it too so the total ergonomics package package so the total ergonomics package gets you molded on both the steering wheel and the shifter. And if you have paddles behind, we can put flutes on the back side to help you get a more positive contact on it. So when you're pulling on the levers, you're gonna get a good shift every single time. So that's what that's all about.